Naraset is starting a revolution, and I'm going to tell you how. Happy 4th of July, everybody! I'm breaking down The Revolution, a $30 NAR set of the Ancient Ways cycling deck list to celebrate the red, white, and blue. The cost of this deck includes shipping and the cost of our Planeswalker. This video is part of our Holly Deck series of budget Oathbreaker decks themed around the holidays. If you think that's fun, then check out the playlist link in the description. If you like the deck list or any of the cards, check out Mythic Games Colorado. There will be a link in the description. Now let's get into it. In today's Oathbreaker deck, our revolutionary red, white, and blue leader is going to be Narset of the Ancient Ways. She costs one, a blue, a red, and a white mana. She enters play with four loyalty. She's a legendary planeswalker in our set. If we plus one her, we gain two life, and we can add a red, white, or blue mana to our mana pool, but this mana can only be spent to cast non-creature spells. If we minus to her, we can draw a card, and then we may discard a card. When we discard a non-creature card this way, she's going to do damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or planeswalker. Her minus six ability is, you get an emblem with, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this emblem deals two damage to any target. This deck is heavily based around two things, cycling and Narset's abilities. Her plus one supports us and ramps us at the cost of only being able to use that mana on non-creature spells, so we aren't running that many creatures. That's right, our army is the underdog. Next, her minus two ability, which in itself is a cycling type effect, allows us to get the correct supplies and plans in place, and has some potential creature planeswalker removal built right in. Finally, since the lion's share of this deck is non-creature spells, if we need to, we can use her minus six alt, to great effect in the rare event that it comes up. Our signature spell is Windfall. It costs two and a blue and is a sorcery. It says each player discards their hand and draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. We are using a wheel effect like Windfall because, no duh, we want to revolve our hand. That's what the revolution's all about. And digging deep is a lot cheaper for a budget deck than running an expensive tutor. This card is affordable and it will allow us to restart our cycling revolutions if we stall out mid-game. And with the added bonus, it will mess with our enemy's plans by throwing them away. It can backfire when our enemy actually gets what they need off of this, so use this card with caution when casting. Now that we know what's in our command zone, what's our game plan? We are going to cycle through our deck all the time. And, at the same time, we're going to attempt to be controlling the game as we assemble our various bombs. Our goal is to cycle and control until we can drop a win con. Now, on to the breakdown. In our first section, we need to make sure we have the right resources in fixed positions. We are running Migratory Route for three, a white and a blue. It's a sorcery. We create four 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying, but it's really in here because we can basic land cycle it away to help us fix. Gleaming Resistance costs four and a white. Creatures we control get plus one, plus two until end of turn and we untap those creatures. It also has basic land cycling. And finally, Regren Crystal costs three. It can tap for one mana of any of our colors and has cycling too. So if in the late game we don't need this, we can just get rid of it to get a better card. This might not seem like a lot of cards to help us fix our mana, but there are more cards hidden in our mana base, so hang on and we will get there. Now let's look at the cards that will help our revolution run in Cycling Made Easy. Zerta the Dawn Waker costs one and two hybrid Boros mana. It's a legendary creature elemental fox that has power and toughness 3-3. We're gonna skip over the companion ability because we're not going to be using her that way. Abilities we activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can reduce the mana in those costs to less than one. If we pay one in tap, Zerda, target creature can't block this turn. This is great for us because it reduces most of our cycling costs down to one mana. Also, that ability to give one of our creatures evasion can come in handy in the late game. Next we have Tetonic Reformation for one in a red, it's an enchantment. It gives each card in our hand cycling for one red mana, and it itself can cycle for two. 
this card can help us take dead lands in our hand and cycle them away and keep us going so we don't stall out in the first place. Fluctuator costs two mana and it's just going to reduce all of our cycling costs by two. In some cases this is going to make some cards free to cycle. There is a card that does this a little bit better however. In our deck we're running new perspectives for five and a blue so it's a little bit later in the game. When it enters the battlefield we draw three cards. As long as you have seven or more cards in your hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. So this makes sure that we don't have to pay cycling, and sometimes you can win the war simply by changing your perspective. Gavi the Nest Warden for two, a blue, a red, and a white is a 2-5 human shaman. We may pay zero rather than pay the cycling cost of the first card we cycle each turn. And whenever we draw our second card each turn, we can create a 2-2 red-white dinosaur cat creature token. Gabby's in here to help us reduce our cycling costs, but also she's one of a few cards that's going to help us build an army of blockers and attackers. We're going to get into those next, but it is also good to reference here that you don't always want to do all your cycling on your turn. There are some, some cards that can help you, and you're going to sometimes want to save the cycle on other people's turns to get that extra value. In our next section, let's get into some other ways we can get some blockers in play with Forced Conscription. Hollow One costs 5 colorless mana, it's a 4-4, four, four, but he costs 2 less for each card we've cycled or discard this turn, so many times we'll probably actually get to play him for free. Yardro, Wandering Monster, costs 5 and 2 red, it's an 8-8 Legendary Dinosaur Turtle with Trample and Haste and Cycling for 1 and a red. When you cycle Yardro, Wandering Monster, you shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yardro Wandering Monster four or more times this game, you get to put it directly onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. Decree of Justice costs X, X, 2, and 2 white, and it allows us to create X, 4, 4 white angel creature tokens with flying. However, if we cycle it for 2 and a white, we can instead pay X, and if we do, we create X, 1, 1 white soldier creature tokens instead. Another great way to help us build our army. Next up, we have an improbable alliance, much like when the burgeoning United States made an alliance with France against the English. For a blue and a red, we get enchantments as whenever we draw our second card each turn, we create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. And it also has a draw and discard mechanic on it we're probably never going to use. Ominous Seas costs 1 and a blue. It's an enchantment. Whenever we draw a card, we put a foreshadow counter on it. We can remove eight of these counters from it to create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token. In order to win, we're going to have to get creative and outwit our enemies. So let's continue the game with our battle plans. Nimble Obstructionist, Sensor, and Countervailing Winds are all counterspell type of abilities that are available on a cycling card. Nimble Obstructionist is a 3-1 flying creature that when we cycle it, we can counter an activated or triggered ability. Sensor forces a player to pay an additional one or it's countered for one in a blue. And countervailing wins counter strike spell unless its controller pays one for each card in our graveyard. So this is probably the best of the three. N neutralize for one and two blue just says counter card it's spell. Astral Drift for two and a white says whenever you cycle Astral Drift or cycle another card while Astral Drift is on the battlefield, you may exile target creature if you do return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. We don't have a lot of enter the battlefield effects we can make use of with Astral Drift. However, mid-combat we can cycle a card and bounce one of our opponents out of combat and back into play untapped, thus protecting ourselves. So this card does still have some fringe uses and can also be used to politic. Cast Out for three and a white is an enchantment. We can play at flash speed when we play it. We can exile a permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. So it's nice to have some removal that says a permanent. Waker of the Waves for five and two blue is going to inhibit our opponent's creatures by making them one power lower. And if it's in our hand, we can pay one and a blue and discard it. Look at the top two cards of our library and put one of them into our hand and the other in the graveyard. This is a strictly better cycling, but doesn't count. Angel Song for one and white will prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Choking Feathers costs three and a blue. We can tap up to four target creatures. If we cycle it, we can tap one creature. Aura Extraction lets us pay one and a white. We put target enchantment on top of its owner's library. Clear lets us destroy target enchantment. Forsake the Worldly lets us exile target artifact or enchantment. 
And finally, we have an odd card that will give us Shroud till end of turn in Gilded Light for one and a white. There are going to be times you feel like you're losing the battle, and at those times, we're going to start over. Star Storm is a board white for X and two red that's going to do X damage to each creature. Sweltering Suns costs one and two red and it'll do three damage to each creature. Dismantling Wave for two and a white. We get to choose one artifact and one enchantment for each of our opponents and destroy it. Or if we pay six and two white and cycle it, we can destroy all artifacts and enchantments in play. Acroma's Vengeance for four and two white says destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. And all of this removal and board wipe will help us reset up our battle plan. Now, having set up the deck so far, you may feel bad for discarding your resources, but in the next section, we're going to make sure it wasn't in vain, in Remembrance. First up, we have Unpredictable Cyclone, and nothing says revolution like a cyclone. For 3 and 2 red, it's an enchantment that says if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the revealed card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then you put the exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is an amazing card for our deck because it turns every cycling card into another card at random. So if we're stuck and our opponent's going off, in an odd chance, we can cycle something we don't need in hopes of maybe getting a counter spell or some combat interaction off the top of our library. Next, we have Boon of the Wishgiver for four and two blue. It will let us draw four cards and it cycles for one. We also have Abandoned Sarcophagus for three. This is probably one of the most amazing cards in the deck because it allows us to get at the cards we've been throwing in the graveyard. You may cast spells that have cycling ability from your graveyard. If a card that has cycling ability would be put to your graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled, you exile it instead. There are going to be moments when this can keep you from certain play patterns, so don't worry about removing it if you have to. Next up, we have Flourishing Fox. In remembrance of the cards we're cycling, he's going to grow big with every card we do cycle. For one white mana, he's a 1-1 Fox. Whenever we cycle another card, we put a 1-1 counter on it. Dronish Slinger has a similar ability. He costs one in a red and he's a 2-2. Whenever we cycle another card, he's going to do one damage to each of our opponents, which can be breaking if allowed to stay in play. Spellpire Phoenix for three and two red is a 4-2 that's going to actually help us get our cycling cards back. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, we may return target instant or sorcery card with cycling from our graveyard to our hand. At the beginning of our end step, if we have cycled two or more cards this turn, we can return this Phoenix from our graveyard to our hand. So the fact we can also reuse him to reuse cards is kind of nice. Finally, a great card for remembering all the cards we've cycled is Zenith Flare. For two, a red and a white, it will let us do X damage to any target and we're going to gain X life where X is the number of cards with cycling ability in our graveyard, which can be huge. In our final section, we're going to answer what it is we have been fighting for in a brand new day. Our deck's big win condition, if we can't get anything else to work as we fight through the game, is Approach of the Second Sun for six and a white. It's a sorcery that reads, if Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library 7 from the top and you gain 7 life. So ideally, you're going to cast this, gain 7 life, put this card 7 cards from the top of your library, and then cycle right back down to it, getting into your hand again in order to play it a second time and close out the game. So now that we've gone through all the cards in the deck, let's have a gander at what makes it run in the mana base. First off, let's go through the cards that are going to help us fix. Ash Barons can tap for a colorless, or we can basic land cycling it for one to get one of our basic lands and put it into our hand. Evolving Wilds can be tapped and sacrificed to search our library for a basic land card and then put it into play tap. Terramorphic Expanse can do the same. And the reason these are nice is they also thin out our decks. So we have less chance of drawing a land late game and stalling out our cycling. We have three lands that cycle in Drifting Meadow, Remote Isle, and Smoldering Crater. They all tap for a man of their color. They all come into the battlefield tapped, and they all cycle for two. We are running two cards that just tap for one man of any of our colors. We are running Mystic Monastery and Command Tower. Finally, we're running four islands, four mountains, and four plains. 
Now that we've had a look at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording, including the cost of shipping, but not the cost of those basic lands. The average deck cost for an Arset of the Ancient Ways deck on Oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $416.83. Our deck is much lower at $27.57. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck cost, there will be a link posted in the description. This deck was built on a budget, and if you have the resources, here are some deck betterments and improvements you might want to consider. In this video, we're doing things a little bit differently. Since most of this deck is made to be cycled or discarded, I will not be suggesting exact replacements. You could replace a basic land in the deck with Ragren Triome. It's a island mountain plane that taps for one mana of any of its three colors. It enters the battlefield tapped and cycles for three. And then if you wanted to add any of the three thriving lands in our colors, you could remove a basic land for that of the same color. Astral Slide costs two and a white. It's enchantment. Whenever a player cycles a card, you may exile target creature. If you do, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This is a good way, again, just to get some things out of the way when they're dangerous to you. Complicate costs two and a blue. It's a counter spell that counters target spell unless its controller pays three. If we cycle it for two and a blue, it counters target spell unless its controller pays one. So the difference there is, do you counter spell unless they pay three, or do you counter spell unless they pay one and get to draw a card? Finally, if you just feel like you want to win more, we suggest upgrading the deck with either a Laboratory Maniac or Jace Wilder of Mysteries. Since we're going to cycle almost every card in the deck in a lot of games, getting down to zero cards is not impossible, so these are just really good backup win conditions that sadly were too expensive for the deck list this time. We also would like to suggest the Locust God for four, a blue, and a red. It's a legendary creature of God, 4-4 four, four with flying. Whenever you draw a card, you create a 1-1 one, one red and blue insect creature token with haste. We pay two, a blue, and a red. But when Locust God dies, we return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So what makes Locust God good is he helps build our board with flying evasive creatures, and he's very hard for opponents to permanently remove. So, how did you like today's deck tech? And how would you upgrade it? We want to know, so tell us below. This is also a newer video format, so tell me what you think. It also helps us if you remember to click the button here to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when our next deck tech goes live. There will be a playlist and a video here if you want more from the signature spell bomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and happy holidays.